Katarima has been in existence way back in 1970s with an aim of uh, supporting children with disabilities by providing uh, various services such as um, medical rehabilitation, uh, psychosocial support. We also fabricate appliances such as crutches, wheelchairs, corsets, you know, orthopedic shoes and so many appliances. The type of appliances that we make, we have cerebral palsy chairs, those are called CP chairs for cerebral palsy children. This teaches them how to sit. After sitting, they learn how to stand. We use a standing frame for training them to weight bear and then a walker for teaching them how to walk and then eventually crutches. The medical department is comprised of different sections. We have the physiotherapy section and in there we have uh, the physiotherapist and the physiotherapy volunteer, meaning we have two physiotherapists and they do provide physiotherapy on a daily basis. We have the occupational therapy section. We also have the nursing section where nursing care is provided. And then we have the orthopedic management section where children, let me say those with club feet are casted, are manipulated and casted. Um, also measurement of assistive devices or recommendation for assistive devices is also done in the orthopedic management section. Here children who come here when they are malnourished, especially children who present with cerebral palsy, we refer them, majority of them, to the nutrition therapy department. And then we also have the early learning center. Some of the children, they would be able to go to school, but because they are not competent enough in activities of daily living, they, uh, they live out, they are left out sometimes. So having the early learning center, it helps them to acquire the skills of activities of daily living so that they can be enrolled in the mainstream schools. I got to know about Katarima when I was in my P7 vacation. My invigilator told me about it. I didn't know what, much what, of what they were doing, but I just went there to check whether I can get support because by then I could not move up. I used to use a wheelchair and I was tired of using the wheelchair all the time because it could give me hard time. When I went there, they gave me curry pads, clutches, and I uh, went through some operation whereby at least now I can use the clutches and calipers, I can move alone, but by then I used to use the wheelchair, had to go with someone. Our mission is to, to have a society where all the children with disabilities and uh, persons with disabilities can enjoy their uh, full rights and also be able to achieve their full potential and live productive lives. Disability calls for a lot of patience and it's, it's, it is also very expensive. You find a child, you know, to, to get a surgery, it may cost the parents over one million, over 500,000. Some parents, after giving birth to a child with a disability, they easily give up. And because of the superstitions and the myths that attach to disability, something maybe it is a taboo. Others think maybe they were bewitched. And you find so many uh, homes of uh, children with disabilities having only mothers because the fathers have already gone away thinking that maybe there's a problem with a woman. And that's why at Catalina we believe that something can be done. And we encourage all those who are still hiding children in, uh, behind houses, you know, locked locking them out in houses, others tying ropes on them, to please uh, bring the children for rehabilitation. Very many children come here with cerebral palsy. In simple terms, I can say brain damage. We have epilepsy, children who fall down and then saliva may come out and then they also give out a loud noise. Those are the children who present with, uh, with epilepsy. We have hydrocephalus, we have spina bifida, uh, we have no knees. Uh, we have also club feet, and then we have uh, oxbow legs. And these conditions, they are on a high increase. Every year we see new children who are coming to be rehabilitated. Most of the challenges we have as the workshop, first of all, we have high cost of materials that are really, really expensive, yet 
we work with vulnerable children and we need them to have appliances. I can give an example, timber, uh, there is poplin, uh, artificial limbs, they're quite expensive and yet we need the children to move and socialize with other people, that independence. As medical department we do current community-based rehabilitation and during our service provision from the communities we noted that there are a number of challenges we face or there are a number of challenges our mothers and the children face when they are out there in the communities. Uh, one of them is the undecentralized services. You'll find that you've manipulated the child, you put casting, but this child coming from a very far district, you'll find she cannot again go, go to a nearby health center or hospital for further services. She will need, or he or she will need to travel back to Katalema. And then we also noted that in the country as a whole, there are some drugs which are not available. And yet they are very key for the survival of some children disabilities, for example, children with spina bifida. You note uh, that the child with spina bifida to survive, they need to empty their bladder. And this is with the help of a drug called oxybutynin. But within the whole of Uganda, you never find this oxybutyne. It's in form of tablets, but the one we want is in form of capsules. We depend on the donors until they bring in the drug. We received oxybutyne in March, it got finished. Up to now, children are back to school, but they lack that oxybutyne. And then you'll find also some drugs, antiepileptics drugs. You reach the hospitals, you reach some health centers. These are drugs that are supposed to be taken by the child with a disability, by the child with epilepsy on a daily basis. And they actually, they are not supposed to miss. If at all the doctor recommends it has to be on a daily basis, never stop. But you'll find this child, this caregiver going to a hospital and, never, and will not find the drug there. Meaning this child is going to, the child is going to be affected in a way that she may skip, let me say, a week or three days or until the drugs are what? I received at a health center. And the problem we have is about the, the buildings that we have around, all the tail lines, the schools, they've not really provided ramps for school going children, for example. They use, there are those who use wheelchairs. They need ramps. They need to access toilets. They need to access other offices. However much I use the, the clutches and carry pads, there are some places where I can't go to when the stairs are very high. I can't access them. Sometimes I may need to go to some offices, but I have to send there someone, and that person might not deliver my message like I want it to be delivered. Then another thing, when it's like weather conditions, sometimes you find there are some places which are hard for me to get. When it rains, some muddy areas, I see no, I can't access some areas, or I can't attend some of the lectures. Uh, then another thing, some of the convenience places, for example where I studied from, the toilets are high, they are stayed like that I was saying, so I find it hard to have to travel back to where I stay to get into the convenience rooms. In the future we want to expand on the services that we provide to, to these children. We also have very old structures, we want to revamp this whole place. We are living in a dynamic world. There are new things coming on board, new technology. So we want also uh, our staff to upgrade with uh, the new knowledge and skills and everything. The other thing that we, we are also planning is to build a very strong uh, partner organization network where we cannot provide the service at least other partners can provide. Because our major aim is to ensure that these children get a comprehensive package of service. Like the saying goes that nobody should be left behind. We don't want to leave these children and the youth behind because these are the future leaders of tomorrow. And if we don't support them now, uh, we may be having a very bad uh, society tomorrow where people feel they were not supported. I really thank Katarima for being in place for me. It has really helped me has pushed on my education, it has supported me in terms of movement. I'm really happy about that and I love it so much.